In this video, we're going to have a look at the horizontal translation of a hyperbola. We already know what the influence of the a and the q value is on a hyperbola. Let's go and have a look at what the p value does. In the parabola, we already saw that when you change the x value in the equation, the graph will move horizontally left or right in the opposite direction that you would suspect. At the moment, we have the graph of 2 over x. If we go and change the x value by adding a positive p, you will see that the graph moves in the negative horizontal direction. Similarly, if we add a negative p value, the graph will move in the positive direction. We also know that our hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. One is at the line y is equal to x, and the other, the line y is equal to minus x for our hyperbola with no translations. When we now go and add a p-value to the function, you will see that these two axes of symmetry move along with the graph. So they either move in the negative direction for a positive p-value or in the positive direction for a negative p-value. A hyperbola also has two asymptotes. Firstly, on the y-axis at x is equal to 0, and then on the x-axis at y is equal to 0. We already know that the horizontal asymptote moves up and down with the graph if we add a q-value. If we go and add a p-value, you will see that the horizontal asymptote stays constant, but this time the vertical asymptote also moves two units to the left in this case. So because in this case the p-value was positive, the graph and this vertical asymptote moved in the negative direction. If we make this p-value negative, the graph as well as this vertical asymptote will move in the positive direction. So to sum up, we already know from grade 10 that the a-value indicates whether we are working in the first and third or second and fourth quadrant, and the q-value shows us the vertical translation. The p-value indicates the horizontal translation. If this value is positive, the graph moves to the left, and negative, the graph moves to the right. A hyperbola has two asymptotes, which also translate according to the p and q-value. So, you will have the vertical asymptote at x is equal to minus p, and the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to q. Lastly, a hyperbola has two axes of symmetry that also undergo the horizontal and vertical translations. Let's now go and sketch a hyperbola. Sketch the function and indicate the intercepts with the axes, axes of symmetry, and asymptotes. As always, I start off thinking about a rough sketch, and for that, I have a look at the two asymptotes. The q value of plus 1 indicates the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1. Then, the minus 3 p value indicates the vertical asymptote, and remember here, the opposite happens as what you would expect, so this asymptote is at x is equal to 3. Next, I'm going to have a look at the sign of the a value, which in this case is negative. This tells me that the graph will be in the second and fourth quadrant from the perspective of the crossing of the two asymptotes. Because this graph moved vertically and horizontally, there will be an x-intercept and a y-intercept that we need to determine. For the y-intercept, I'm going to change the x value in the equation to a 0, and then I can simplify to get a y-value of 2. This means the y-intercept has the coordinate 0, 2. For the x-intercept, I'm going to substitute the y-value with 0, and from here I'm going to choose to move the whole term that has the x in it to the left, so that the 3 is now positive. Next, I need to get the x out from under the denominator, so I will multiply with the whole denominator on the right-hand side. 
So 3 is equal to x minus 3, which means that x is equal to 6. In the rough sketch, we've already indicated the two asymptotes, but there are also two axes of symmetry that we need to determine. The first axis of symmetry has a gradient of positive 1, and the second axis of symmetry has a gradient of minus 1. Now, both of these symmetry axes should also undergo the translations that the hyperbola undergo. So firstly, we should subtract 3 from both the x's. The q value of plus 1 means that the graph will translate one unit upwards and that we simply add at the end of each equation. And now we just need to simplify the equations. So the first equation will be y is equal to x minus 2. And the second equation, we still need to multiply the minus in. And once we've done that, we will have y is equal to minus x plus 4. Now, finally, we can draw the sketch. Firstly, we draw our two asymptotes. Now we can draw the two parts of the hyperbola because we know that it will lie in the second and in the fourth quadrants. Remember that the graph moves closer to the two asymptotes but can never touch them. The y-intercept is at 0 and 2 and the x-intercept will be at 6 and 0. Lastly, we need to draw the axes of symmetry. Remember that they intersect on the point of intersection of the asymptotes. So our first axis of symmetry will be the positive gradient of y is equal to x minus 2. And the second axis of symmetry will be the one with the negative gradient of y is equal to minus x plus 4. And here we have our complete sketch.